Hey there. Thanks for coming to my YouTube channel. Remember, I also do uh, Facebook's chats and uh, podcasts. Uh, Leroy Dozel on Facebook. Uh, thanks for coming on. So what I'm going to be doing today is uh, I've had, you know, numerous people say like, what are some of my routines or things I do to hit um, on a regular basis? And what I'm going to do today isn't necessarily doing on a regular basis. But, uh, you know, we've had uh, rainy weather lately or sometimes it's tough to actually get someone to come out and hit with us. So you got to resort to your next thing if you're dedicated, if you want to do well. I mean, golfers do it. What do golfers do? They go to the driving range and they're just driving, uh, you know, golf balls and hit them into certain patches in the open range. Well, it's the same thing with softball, you know. But I think one of the most important things I get out of the tee work, besides the muscle memory, is as we're getting older, senior softball. Repetitions keeps our body, our tendons, our muscles loose and flimsy. You got to kind of think of your body, your muscles, your tendons like rubber bands. And if we're not stretching them out or uh, if we're not keeping that same routine going, they dry up. And what happens to a dry rubber band and you pull it, it snaps. So it's the same idea whether you're setting up in the backyard, finding a ball field to do it. It don't matter on these rainy days, you know, if you have a net, set it up in the garage, set it up under the patio and get swings. And I can't emphasize, especially like once I started turn after 40 years old, it's like every year, you know, going 41, 42, I always had to do just a little bit extra to kind of perform at a certain level. For me, in regards to my, uh, you know, my body condition and the way I restore myself, uh, continuing to do this, I haven't really felt a let down. Sure, I probably don't have the arm strength or run as fast as I used to, but I still feel, you know, doing that keeps me in that upper echelon of people in shape and senior softball as well as playing on those uh, desired teams. So also remember, doing this, you're doing it for your body, your cardio, to improve your, uh, you know, your livelihood. You know, if we're all looking to play this game for a long time and live a long, fruitful life, exercise is a vital, important thing to circulate the blood, the blood cells, the white blood cells, oxygen to the brain, all that good stuff. But enough of that. So first, what I want to show you when I hit, I do this religiously when I hit, and uh, I also enjoy doing it, which, um, you know, regular BP. If you notice, I have cones, okay? I kind of ideally figure out where my first baseman would play me, and that's kind of like where they are, okay? In BP, this is a lot better. And then you may ask yourself, why does he have two uh, five-man cones? Well, you know, if you're a guy who likes to go to the backside, then you should be setting up your cones the way they play you in a game, okay? Obviously, with me, I'm always getting three to the left side. Okay, but there are times, you know, if the home runs are gone, you may have these middle holes tighter. You may see, you know, a lot of times uh, defense may just want the guy to pull the ball to hit the home run or whatever. You know, if you're a disciplined hitter and you do this stuff, then you don't have to worry whether on the right or left side. You should develop your back control with T-work and BP. So there you go. So, if you know, right side here, there's a right side five man, the pull hitter. Okay. Um... So the next thing that I, I, I want to show here is look at the stuff that I have. First off, you're going to hit some tees. Make sure you have enough softballs, man. I mean, you're going to come out here and do some work. Make sure you got more than enough softballs. And there you go. This is a very, you could buy this for 29, 30 bucks. And I figure if you're doing tee work and you really love this game, you're probably going to buy little simple things to continue, you know, especially when you get on those hot streaks. I know when I'm having a great year in those hot streaks it's like i hate to break out of my routine this helps right here it you know it prevents us from doing this because a lot of times when people are doing these kind of things they're always doing this and this isn't good i mean obviously bend the knees but when you're doing this you're taking a toll on the lower lumbar or your lower back so having something like this is great you need a t but next thing what i like to do and this is for a lot of you beginners or maybe not familiar with the t if you can notice i have lines here and you can kind of notice they kind of run at a 45, okay? Inside corner, down the middle, backside, okay? And then I have some kind of like a ruler where if these would be quarter inches and you got millimeters, but you see the two inside. That's also kind of adding on if you want to work some left side, right side, but it's centering the ball in that area because um, something I do want to share, you don't want to be a zone hitter, okay? 
So when you're hitting BP or some people get these machines, a zone hitter is basically somebody who is consistently good when the ball's in one specific zone. Okay, that's a zone hitter. It's like baseball. If that ball, keep it out of that zone, they ain't gonna do well. Same thing with some hitters. If you don't put the ball in that zone, they're gonna struggle, you know, make them re, whatever. Don't be a zone hitter. And that's the purpose for these lines is to mix up the ball. Even, I'm not gonna go in depth, but I mean, put the ball at higher levels, lower levels, mix it around and, and hit like when my BP, I hit like I have two strikes. T work, yeah, you're working on rolling the hands, cutting the ball, getting the barrel on the ball, and et cetera. So as I shared here, you can see those uh, those lines, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set you up right over here. Uh, yeah, there we go, okay. Ooh, all right. Next, I'm gonna put on my batting gloves and I wanna thank the Arizona glove guy, Fred Frimless. I appreciate you uh, sending me these great batting gloves on over. Excellent job. So uh, here's my tee. Next thing I do, because a regular tee isn't gonna be high enough, so you're gonna have to do some altering. So within my bucket here, I put some dirt in there just to make sure it's not falling over. So if you're new hitting a tee and stuff, you know, you gotta know it's a process and you gotta take steps. A lot of times, if you didn't play like high function of baseball or something, a lot of guys don't understand. A tee can be your best friend, but it could also be your worst enemy. And you need to be able to use a tee to exercise your skills. And like I said, so to me, if you're starting to use a tee for the first time, I would just basically put it down the middle. And you're just working. So here's the front angle of the ball, of my tee. Okay. And I line this corner right here with that center line. Next thing you wanna do, you know, I know some guys that like hitting the ball at a low level, and that's tough to cut it. But ideally, if you watch a lot of great hitters, watch hitters in the conference or whatever, they're up on the disc because they're wanting to cut the ball. I told a lot of guys learning this game is when you're taking that follow through, you don't want the barrel of the bat to go above your shoulder. Maybe when you're going bazinga, but it'd be a light one. If you look at like those big hitters in the conference or in senior softball, they're not muscling it like this. They got a cut swing with just a little bit of up angle and it's gone. So for me, I consider myself a line to line, hit home runs when they're needed, but more base hits. See how high I have that ball? And that's what you got to determine. Next thing, when you hit BP and stuff, you got to figure out your spot in the box, okay? Because on the defensive side, where I'm standing, this is some other stuff. If I'm way off, that's why the defense will say he's off the plate. Because all you can really do with that ball is go backside and right center. You're not, it's very tough to come here and roll it over to pull. Okay? So that's why it's important to get yourself in the box. I like to stand in the box where I can go left side, pull, line to line. You can't figure me out on the defensive side where if you're way off the plate, good defensive players in tune to it, they're going to yell off the plate. I mean going middle backside. This is what I call on. A guy like me, you just kind of say straight. And that means you got to kind of, probably the least likely ball is a guy this way, is least likely gonna hit one down the right field line. He's probably most likely like myself, looking right center to pull. Off the plate, left center, backside. Next time you have a game, try that. Okay, so I have the tee set up. So uh, I can go straight up the middle and I'm gonna take a couple going right up the middle, okay? For me, I like my hands up. It just makes it easier to chop, the, I mean, to cut the ball as well as a, not uppercut. So I have my hands up, my feet, and I want to take my step, and there you go. That wasn't the best contact there, so that's where I got to make my adjustment. Same spot in the box. So right now I'm just going middle to middle. Okay. So right now I've yet to really cut it because I am getting loose. Hands up. There we go. Working on cutting the ball. Where I have it set up, it's pretty much a middle pitch. That pitch right there, I can go left center or right center. I'll go left center right now with this. 
between the cone. And then if you could see the lighter cone over there, that's the, 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 the hole that's usually open for me. So that same middle pitch, because the three areas of the ball in the middle, I can pretty much go left center middle or backside. Same stance, and I'm going for that yellow. And I, if you notice my area, it's the same area in the box. See? Pays the bills. So I'll go one more backside and pull where it is on the middle. So this is left center. Between the cones. Right center hole. There it is. Okay. So now, once again, using those lines, as you can see, I'm gonna set the, the uh, my tee up now. And I'm telling you, if you're a guy who customarily goes backside all day, you need to add pulling the ball or five six because a good defensive player is going to read your tendencies. So you got to learn to go backside or pull. And it's not about in the box. Because there's sometimes when I'm on defense, I'll see a guy go more off the box than normal. And with that, I know he's going backside. So now that I'm pulling it, I'm putting it a little more forward. I'm lining my line and getting my angles. So now I'm more on the inside corner. And with this ball, every location, this is like I said, you gotta be able to hit this ball to two zones. This inside pitch, I can go five, six, well, actually more. I can go down the third baseline, five, six, or left center, which I'm gonna show you. And then when I put it on the backside, same idea. I can go three, four, or right center, or even up the middle if I need to, okay? So now I have this set up to go five, six. Okay, hitting is a science. Well, look, I'm going to still stay here so you can actually see what's going on here. All right. So it's set. I have it set up to go 5 six, same spot in my box. And when you're pulling the ball, obviously, you're going to want, I mean, this ball's coming at an angle that you want to get it, like I said, around, you know, belly button high to cut it. Okay. And obviously in front of the plate. When you're looking to pull the ball, you want to catch the ball in front of the plate. A lot of mistakes I see people do when using a tee, they put the tee on home plate. You don't want to set it because then to adjust it to do what you want to do, you're going to have to back up out of the box. Okay? Pulling the ball. You're always looking to get the ball out more in front of the plate. Okay? So I'm going to line my little arrow up a little bit better here. There we go. Same angle here. Rolling the wrist. Five, six. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. But if you notice, see? Same distance to home plate. Oh, five, six. I'm hoping you can see that there. So I'm going to give you a different angle here. So you can actually see, because I'm cutting the ball pretty good here. Inside part of the plate. Same distance to the inside corner. Five, six ball. And that's the purpose of those cones. Okay. Now I'm going to take the same pitch. And I'm going to go left center with it. Okay. And like I said, for me, hitting is a science. And so when you go against the science of hitting, that's where you roll the ball over and pop them up. Okay? Same inside pitch, same stance. My next outlet, left center. There you go. One thing I always focus on, if you notice, I'm not really hitting the lower part. Because this thing is, it, you don't want to rush through hitting balls on a tee. Some people rush and they want to take these hardcore swings. No. Muscle memory, fluid, okay? And I became friends with the tee in baseball. Softball, I don't use it as much because I've been fortunate to have people routinely hit me with BP, but there are times like today, can't do it or the field's out because you can easily do this on an open field, okay? So once again, I'll go left center, same distance. There you go. And those are gonna pay the bills, okay? So now the next thing I'm going to do, and notice I got to bring it backwards a little bit. I'm going to be going to the back side of the field, lining up my cone. And I brought it inward. I had the tee. You can't see the difference totally, but here's the angle. There is a difference here. Look, you can see how my bat is to going back side. Okay. 
same distance here. See, as a defensive player, things I look for, sometimes when guys are trying to go backside, some guys will do this. When you read that, that's why you got to follow the hitter. You read that, you know they're going backside. If they're off the dish, you know they're going backside. A lot of your, when you go up in levels, the game gets faster, but your defensive players get smarter because everybody hits. I've had many conversations or a slight headbang in tournaments where people are like, they're great hitters, they can hit it anywhere. Then I want them to show me because as a great team defensive player, until you beat me and show me you could do more than one thing with that bat, you're not a zone hitter, then I take the hat off, I respect you, and I let you get yourself out. But sometimes pushing that guy to a certain area, you get him out. So now right here at this ball, I'm gonna take it for fir at first three, uh, three, four hole. And I brought it in. You're still kind of catching it to the front of the plate, but obviously notice, it's, here's my belly button. Okay? Same distance. And I ain't shifting, all I'm doing is this. And that's gonna work. Same thing, same distance. And you can see it right between those cones. You know, a lot of guys don't see me go backside in tournaments and stuff, but I tell them, I'll tell them probably like a 900 hitter going backside. Because one thing is I don't do is I don't force going backside. You know, when I play second base, a dead pull hitter and he's on the dish, I may bait that 3-4 to get him out of his element, which I'm gonna show you real brief briefly, okay? But for the most point right now, Throwing that barrel through, throwing that barrel through and keeping the shoulder tight. When going backside, you don't want this swing or finishing here. When you're going backside, it should be, see my, my chin, my shoulder, and you're looking in the direction. A lot of times that I see some guys go right side and they're popping up, not successful, they're doing this. Or they're forcing it, they're doing this, and they're getting sawed off. So once again, same side. I love my hands because uh, it's just easier for me to cut the ball. There it is. That's going by the second baseman. Now with that same pitch, I'm going to take it right center. Right where that yellow cone is. Right center gap. Oh. So hitting a ball like that, I pulled my front shoulder off. So I got to, that's telling me when you're topping the ball and not getting strong contact, that means I'm pulling that front shoulder out. And that's why a T is good to work on your hitting because it's always working on that shoulder in and driving that barrel through, you know. Pull swing, it's here, look at my shoulder, backside, okay. So my, uh, the thing I fix up here is just keeping that shoulder in, but drive the barrel through. There you go, much better. Oh, you say you want to see the ball cut. So if you notice my barrel, I could probably do less on the barrel. Because when you're rolling the barrel, my hands, that's when you're getting those ground balls. So I won't roll them now. Check it out. And that's what the T does. Because part of improving your hitting is knowing if you miss the ball, what do you need to do? I've seen people say when they pop it up, oh, I dropped my hands. No, it's because you're probably opening your front shoulder or trying to pull an outside pitch. So once again, keeping the shoulder in. <sighs> Look at that. Notice the difference in the hitting. Here's something I still wanna show you. I'm, that, that pitch is set to go outside, or I'm a, a guy looking, look, I'm off the plate right now. I'm looking to go backside, that's how I go. Look what I try to do when I try to pull this ball. See that miss? That's what happens in games when people are look, they're set to go backside. And that's the best ball I can hit. If I'm set to go backside, I'll show you right now. I can hit that ball left center. See? But I'll tell you one thing I'm not able to do is get in that five six hole unless I do something funky. See what I mean? So you could that is I mean, try it yourself. Get those outside pitches. See if you can hit a good five six hole. You know, if you're on the plate, I'm gonna show you about going backside. Look, I'm off. Try to go five six hole. 
Follow me, and let's just finish it up with the inside pitch. I'm trying to go backside. Usually, the only way I'm going to hit that pitch is the backside. I would have to shuffle my feet. So look, I'm trying to hit the 3-4 hole. And that's what happens a lot of times, right? Oh man, I was trying to go right side and hit a weak ass ground ball to the right side. Look, I'm set to pull. Inside pitch. How often do you see that? Okay, that's something you gotta test. That's a defensive problem. I do wanna thank Fred Friendless for sending me these wonderful Arizona gloves, which are gonna match the Aichi Wallace up. Want to thank Joe, uh, Joe Proc, JB, and California Bat Company for uh, you know believing me, trusting with me. Uh, we'll be bringing out some new lines of softball bats, as well as I'm excited about the new little Mexican coming out for 2024, as well as its graphics. The last thing I want to really uh, emphasize, we all like hitting in good batter's boxes. And it drives me nuts when guys don't prep or fix your field. When I got out here, this thing was a major hole. So what you do is either bring a shovel. If it's a hot day, bring a bring a, a shovel, water, and just fill up your holes, pat in the ground, pat it, use your shoes. You know what I mean? Especially now, it's gonna rain. If you keep this nice and neat, the rain's gonna harden it, okay? So you, you want to make sure it looks good, all right? You cheapos, because what happens, you come out of these holes and people hate them. Uh, another good thing to do is get an artificial surface and just make your own mat, but not everybody's going to spend 100 bucks. So just work on getting everybody educating. Fill up the holes, pat in the ground, keep it nice and neat, okay? Uh, thank you, 2024. If you're able, share, subscribe, like this. Uh, Go to my Facebook, Leroy Dozell, for my podcast, which is tons of offer pay, offer information, conversations, and new things. So, once again, I'd like to thank you for coming on. Once again, improve your game, and it's always that little extra something, you know what I mean, to get you to that next level. This game's like golf. What you put into it, you get back. Keep your focus. Keep grinding it out every day. And I will guarantee you, you will get your game to another level. I'm going to be putting up some more videos on different things that you could do on the defensive side, uh, batting practice, organization to maximize your time, as well as uh, game and theory. So once again, thanks for uh, uh, watching and please subscribe and like.